Greetings, this is September 1st at 1 p.m. and we are looking at an image from the Drive BC Sheridan Highway Cam looking west towards Lone Butte and 93 Mile. We are seeing a lot of haze, a lot of dense smoke as this traveler emerges from that blanket of white. If we switch to the cam at Big Bar, you can see there is haze to the north. Uh, this area is getting the benefit of some westerly flows. However, the wind variation will change depending on where you are. It's moving so slow. In a lot of cases, it's just swirling around and staying locked into valleys, locked into uh, lake areas. As we can see on the Beto Tree Cam looking west over Sheraton, and this link was sent to me by AUAG for me our viewer and there's also another link that uh, uh, this viewer has sent and I'll post it at the end of the video. We are moving over to the infrared on the VIIR system on the Google KML linked below and as you can see 95 percent of what we are viewing are older infrared no new growth. The only new red uh, hot spots being indicated are within existing perimeters. We are looking at a map of the northern flank south of Green Lake, south of Sheridan Lake, and east of Watch Lake. Watch Lake is just above center of your screen. Pressy Lake is just below center of your screen. And no new infrared uh, infringing upon those areas. If we zoom in, I'm seeing only approximately five hot spots that are on the outside fringes. Uh, I'm seeing two southeast of Pressy Lake, uh, heading towards the southeast. Uh, one up by Jack Frost Lake, a couple over by the Rayfield uh, to the right of your center on your screen, and to the lower left of center on your screen, one on the southwest flank of Mount Jim. All the rest are contained within older active hotspots. When we look to the south, we can see Young Lake and Hutchison Lake and the Bonaparte. Again, same as last night, uh, existing older hotspots with no growth. Moving south again towards Loon Lake and Vedette, uh, same situation, these existing uh, longer term isolated groups of fire pockets with no expansion. Now we're going to move further south and take a look at High Heam and same situation. I am noticing a couple of red and orange on the northeast fringe of this fire pocket, uh, but those areas around Clemmis, uh, Brasseau, Barricade Creek and the Battle Creeks and the region closer to Dead Man River all looks holding uh, there's been no change in expansion and we're seeing a lot of yellow that's a good sign so wildfire crews are doing an awesome job in that area containing a volatile situation that's happened over the last couple days with the wind if you are looking for smoke relief I, I can highly recommend the area around Begbie as you can see here uh, the winds have pushed smoke out of that region and if it is accessible to go up to the top of Begbie. You might get a very clear idea of what's occurring in the region uh, just from the viewpoint. Let's jump over to Windy now and you can see four kilometers an hour coming from the northwest and we're in this sort of meandering trough right now. Uh, wind could be coming from the northwest, west, or southwest, depending on your position. But if you look over towards the Bonaparte, that's that highlighted area in green, just right of center, it is that's where the wind is picking up and then spilling over into another trough at uh, Little Fort. There's going to be a lot of variation because the winds are kind of swirling around and they may be suppressing smoke in your area and in the valleys. Uh, if we look at the forecast, we do have this wind scheduled to come in tomorrow, Saturday, starting at approximately noon. 
uh, going up to 15 kilometers an hour and you may see gusts up to 45 kilometers an hour depending on where you are. It should be coming from the south southwest uh, with some variation I'm seeing. It's something that we have to be wary of and prepare for. You want to verify your position and know what your escape routes are in case the fire decides to wake up and begin moving. This is an active wildfire and I'm not sure of the degree of containment around these new expansion areas. So you want to be very aware of which way the wind's going and where those new active infrared are occurring. I'd like to take a look now at a link that was sent to me by AUAG for me, uh, one of our long time viewers. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a historical look at the map of British Columbia and where various fires have occurred over the years. And you can make a comparison between the Elephant Hill shown in orange. Here we can see 1922, 1958, and 2003 in the background. Also, if you want to compare that with the EO browser, I'll put a link below. This happened on August 22nd. That's when the Landsat captured this imagery on a very clear day. And we can see what the ground cover looks like, where the burned areas are, and the terra that's still uh, forested. And then compare with the Landsat photograph from 2017 and see how those areas have recovered and how the regrowth has gone. And I can tell at a glance that 2017 is for the record books. So this has been a really quick update to show you that there's no significant growth overnight. Uh, it seems to be holding and that's a credit to our wildfire crews and all the support people at BC Wildfire that are working so hard on this. It looks like we have 24 hours to consolidate our resources and prepare for a potential of a southern breeze coming in tomorrow, approximately noon, and going through that three o'clock breeze period. So thank you very much for watching. I'll be back as soon as I have new information and please be safe everyone.